Hello everyone, you join me on the wonderful island of Madeira and I'm joined by Nigel. Now, Nigel, I know who you are and I know what you do, but for everybody at home, just go through what you shoot, who you are as a photographer and what you really like about landscape Yeah, photography. so I'm a landscape photographer. I shoot mostly um, woodlands and vistas, uh, occasionally seascapes as well, but I, I really, really enjoy the sort of natural landscape, getting out and just showing the, the landscape in its sort of natural form. Mm -hmm. I don't like man-made objects in my images. There are some churches occasionally, but mostly my images are all sure. about um, nature. And I'm a Nikon ambassador, and I'm really excited to get my hands on this Nikon Z8 here, um, which looks absolutely fantastic. <laughs> New gear. So I think it's worth mentioning that you previously shot on a Z7 II, mm. and you've moved now over to looking at a Z8 for the first time. Yeah. So just talk me through what kind of stands out to you in the differences between the two bodies. Yeah, yeah. so the first thing obviously is it's a little bit bigger. Um, you can see them side by side here, yeah. it's just a little bit higher. It's probably almost the same width, but just a little bit wider. Um, and then obviously with that, a, a little bit more sort of chunky and, and mm -hmm. a, a, you know, weighty feeling. So there's a difference to the grip, I'd say, to, to this one. Um, time will tell whether I think that's a good thing or a bad thing, but sure. it feels secure in my hand. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is that the dials are just a, a little bit different. We've got this dial instead of this, yeah. just one setting dial here. We've got mm -hmm. a lot more options there. And the other dials look a little bit different, actually. Yeah, most of the buttons are generally in a similar place, but yeah. there are some of them have been slightly altered, especially yeah. these three across the top. And then this dial here has generally been borrowed from the Z9. Yeah. So Z9 doesn't have the mode dial like yeah. you have on a Z7 II. It's been borrowed over yeah. to here as well. Um, it doesn't have a rotating dial underneath, but it does give you the four buttons across yeah. the top to control those settings. Can be quite well, useful. That, that is really yeah. good because, I mean, I sort of, sort of recognize it a little bit from when I shot the, the Z9 in Antarctica. Yes. But I, you know, we've got one for bracketing here. I yes. mean, I, I set these function buttons up here um, yeah. to do things like bracketing. So having more options, I think it's, 100%. Yeah, I think it's really, Just means really you can great. Be more flexible when it comes to customizing. Yeah, I, I'm always a massive fan of customization sure. of a camera. The one thing that might stand out to you is where the playback button is. Yeah. So obviously it's in that, that corner on the yeah. Z7 II and now it's moved to the opposite yeah, yeah, corner. Sure. Why is that? <laughs> yeah. The key thing really is, is, is button placement, especially when it comes to matching the Z9. Yeah. So they moved it into replacement of the Z9 Full grip means that when you're using both grips, you can access that playback button ah, from both grips. That makes sense, yeah. And there is obviously a grip for a Z8, so yeah. if you are using that with a vertical grip, you can then access yeah. that button from both yeah, grips as well. Yeah, that's probably not something that I'd use. I mean, no. weight is important to me. I mean, like I said, I don't think it has a lot of weight, but I wouldn't put a grip on. No. Um, I don't think so. I, I'm used on a tripod. I suppose in that case, then, it's good to know that you can customize the function three button on the back of the camera yeah. to be playback again. So yeah, you can, I think so. Yeah, you can yeah, put it back I suspect my muscle place. memory from using this camera for many years yeah. it's stuck to pressing that sure. button. So I think one of the other things that you're really going to like is the screen. Yeah. So when you had a couple of hands on with the Z9, that screen in the vertical flip out is something yeah. that obviously Z7 II doesn't do. Yeah. But Z8, it keeps that yeah, Z9 I know, screen. I noticed that. I mean, I mean, this is such a big thing for me. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, it's the one thing that I, I really wanted. It seems like such a small thing, but just be able to have that flip out like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, when I'm shoot, shooting portrait, because often I'm like quite low. Yeah. And then with the bad back, that makes a big difference, really. Sure. Yeah. And then the other thing I think that's worth mentioning is just the difference in viewfinders. Yeah. So not only is it physically larger, but also it faster frame rate and it's considerably brighter. So I yeah. definitely recommend taking a look through that just to see if you can see a difference. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's bright. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's definitely brighter, isn't it? It's so much brighter and bigger. I think that's amazing. Should feel more responsive in general than just a nicer thing to look through. Yeah, I mean, it, it's almost like an optical viewfinder, I'd say, yeah. with, but with the advantage of all these settings and histogram and everything else. Menus that's, and controls. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. And you can customize all that, I presume. Oh, absolutely, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You can customize every view. So if you want to customize yeah. what your viewfinder looks like, and if you want to customize what your rear screen looks like, then you can absolutely do that. Yeah. Um, whereas with your Z7 II, you could change the display, but you yeah. had fixed displays yeah so that if there wasn't one that suited what you wanted to do you couldn't really do anything with that sure whereas if on a z8 you wanted to have a um, leveling tool yeah. and then a histogram on the same page you yeah. could do that yeah. but you couldn't do that on a z7 yeah so. i mean that that is so important sure S -s specifically for seascapes because if you're shooting seascapes you you, you want to get it level mm -hmm. in camera because you don't want to have to crop to get that level whereas no. you know woodlands you can get away with something that's not level it, it's more to make it look right 100%. rather than having it level but with yeah. seascapes and I always use the histogram for, you know, obviously for, for any exposure. So that having that on the same screen is going to be amazing. 
So I think when it comes to settings, yep. this is obviously a new camera to you. It's fresh out of a box. Yep. It, what would you normally want to go through and what settings would you normally want to yeah, change? Yeah, so I'm not somebody, this is bad practice by the way, but I'm not somebody that shoots to two card slots. Um, but I, So that's something that I'll always have um, you make sure it's just shooting to one card sure. slot, not two card slots. I mean, I notice it's you know similar to the Z7. Um, in this case, it's got an SD card and the yep. CF Express. Yeah. I think that's really good because you know for landscape photography, you don't often need that really fast read and write no. speed. Um, and having an SD card that you can plug in your your computer is just you know I think it's just time saving. Yeah. So that's good. Um, and then. Um, Tone mode, what's tone mode? So I tone, got tone mode on this. No, so tone mode is new for Z8. Yeah. Um, actually, currently, it's not even in a Z9. Okay. So tone mode is all to do with the new file format that they've added related to being able to shoot in a HDR format. Yeah. It effectively allows you to see a 10-bit file on the back of the screen rather yeah. than an 8-bit JPEG oh, that's file. That's really good. Um, and it sh yeah. shoots in relation to the HEIF file. Yeah, because that's really useful, because I think a lot of people probably don't realize that, that when they are looking at that histogram and that um, sure. file, it's a JPEG yeah. interpretation of the RAW file, isn't yeah, it? And, and it's 8-bit, isn't it, I think, on, on this camera? Yes, it is, yeah. yeah. So you have an 8-bit eight JPEG as you would normally on, on yeah. every other camera, and then on here, we can now go from 8-bit JPEGs to 10-bit HEIF yeah. files. Yeah. The other thing that's probably worth mentioning is the RAW file formats are different. Yeah. So they yeah. borrow. So the obviously files that's the thing. Time. You know, always make sure you're shooting in RAW. Mm. <laughs> I don't shoot RAW and JPEG because I just don't think there's any point really. Um, I know some other people do that. For me, I, I just set it into RAW. Sure. Um, and then there's so we can set some RAW recording. Okay, so that's different then. So we've got lossless compress and high efficiency. I think this has got lossless compression, hasn't it? Yeah, so what you would have on a Z7 II is you would have compressed, lossless yeah. compressed, and so on. Whereas on a Z9 and also now on a Z8 is you have lossless compressed, but then you have this new format called high efficiency star and then high efficiency. So but Does that affect the quality of the image? So, yeah, to a degree. Um, and it depends on which one you choose. But the key thing is, is that they're trying to give you as much image quality as possible but in a smaller file size yeah so if you think of it as lossless compressed as like your best quality high efficiency star is pretty much identical to lossless compressed you i think you might be struggling to see some differences unless it's a really extreme dynamic range yeah. scene but it's still a 14-bit file so you're yeah. not sacrificing on that yeah, yeah. whereas other smaller raw files might be 12 bit. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, and then if you go down to high efficiency, you will start to notice a difference in image quality, yeah. but it's an even smaller file size. Yeah. So it just comes down to what the priority What's is. What's the difference in file size? From so it's generally, it's about half and half again. Okay. So lossless compressed is- oh, That's a big saving. And then half that, and then half that again when you yeah, go yeah. from level to level, basically. Okay, cool. White balance is an important thing to me. Sure. Again, I'm a bit unusual in this that I always shoot on cloudy. Sure. Um, yeah. So I, you know, even if it's a, a sunny day, I mean, to be honest, I don't really shoot that often on sunny days. No, not in the UK. <laughs> being a you know, in the UK, but being a landscape photographer, I'm looking for sort of more cloudy days, no. and um, and I'm shooting in the morning and the evening. But by just having it on the same white balance, I just know that there's some consistency to my sure. my images. I'm not saying that's the right thing for everybody to do, but it's what I do. Um, because if I'm, set, if I'm doing a set of images, like in a woodland, for instance, and I put it on auto, then potentially they could look different. I could make a yeah. decision based on a different white balance. Mm -hmm. Whereas if I'm looking at the same um, white balance, that's, that's really I good. I think it's particularly important, even when I'm out shooting sunrise and sunset, that I, I, I completely like what you said there about when you see the image first of all, that initial white balance could skew what you think you, or the way you want to edit that image. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I definitely agree with the consistency of that. One other thing I'd, I'd say is that my focusing is a little bit different. Sure. Um, I think most people use back button focus. So that's mm -hmm. one thing to set up to make sure you're not focusing on your shutter button. I think that's important for, for any landscape photographer. So I usually use pinpoint focus and then I have tap to focus and take a photo on the back of the screen. So I nice. sometimes I have an exposure delay to do that, but I find it's good because I'm often focusing top, middle and bottom. So right. I've always got that data to focus stack. Yeah. So I, I don't know. So the, the setup for that and the, the touchscreen side of things would be the same as it is on your Z7 II. Yeah. I suppose the biggest thing you would notice is that it should be more responsive. Yeah, it cool. should okay. focus faster. Yeah. Um, and it should also focus in lower light situations. Yeah, well that's, so, that's really exciting. I can't wait to try that. Yeah, yeah. I think there's going to be lots of other settings that we'll go through yeah, over the next couple yeah, of days. Yeah. I'm really excited to shoot some wonderful landscapes in this environment yeah, over the next so few days amazing, with you yeah. as well. So um, I can't wait to see what that looks like. Yeah, I'm so excited as well. I just can't wait to actually get out and use the, <laughs> the, the Z8. Well, thank you so much. That's okay.